Child 44 is the story of Russia's first serial killer and it follows uh, the main, main character is uh, Leo who is a member of the secret police and he has made a career out of arresting innocent people and being sort of, uh, sort of political prisoners in a way who have done nothing wrong or who have seen to have done some kind of crime against the state. He's been richly rewarded for arresting innocent people and he decides to arrest, go after the Russia's first serial killer. The problem is in Soviet Russia there wasn't meant to be a serial killer. That crime wasn't meant to exist. And so in doing that, he, he criminalizes himself. And that's, that's the story. It's based upon a real murderer, uh, Andre Chikatilo, who murdered 65 people. Uh, he sort of started in the late 70s and was caught in the 90s. And it was the true life investigation that inspired it. Well, all the interrogations were pretty gory. In fact, they were so horrific that um, many of them I couldn't use. Not out of any sort of um, temerity. It was more that. Uh, uh, I was worried that it would seem like I was kind of trying to shock people with um, the fact that they were so bloody and so brutal. And I ended up using um, a sequence that I found in a book where they use camphor oil and they eject camphor oil and it becomes a kind of, a kind of sort of very early primitive truth serum. And I used that because it was um, more psychological rather than gory. But I mean, pretty much anything you could imagine from a gore point of view, was used by the secret police. I mean, they had special underground chambers with wood paneled walls to absorb bullets, and they had, you know, hoses to wash away the blood each day. Um, and that sort of gives you, that's enough to give you an impression of what was going on in those, in those cells. Um, there's a sort of theory that the killer was influenced by these, these terrible famines that took place in 1930, and there's a theory that the sort of killer's psychosis came out of the, the sort of the trauma of these famines where people had no food and they ended up eating corpses and even killing each other. Um, as food, and so that, in a way, was the starting point for this this killer's kind of pathology. The book has been sold to Fox and Ridley Scott, and Ridley Scott's meant to be directing, with Richard Price writing uh, the scripts, grey scripts, and hopefully that will go into production in uh, this Christmas. You know, apart from books, I also work on screenplays, and I'm working on a. Uh, a, an adaptation of a Japanese anime called Robotech, which was very popular in the 80s. And uh, it's kind of like uh, Transformers, it's like humans are inside it. It's, uh, it's like mecha, you know, those robots where you're fighting. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm adapting that for um, Tobey Maguire. In theory, the release date is 2011, but with movies, those are always pretty fluid. But yeah, I mean, I just heard actually heard back today that I like the script, so hopefully that will, you know, hopefully that will happen. Secret Speech is the sequel to Child 44, and it takes place um, after Stalin has died, so you're in Khrushchev's era. And if the first book, Child 44, is about a society where crime wasn't meant to exist, Secret Speech is about a society where the police are the criminals, and the criminals are really the only innocent people in that society, so it's an upside-down world. Um, so they're the two sort of spins on the crime genre. The third book will be the final in the sort of Leo stories, and that takes place in the Afghanistan war. I'm in 1980, not the current Afghanistan war. My advice would be finish whatever you're working on. You know, until you finish it, it's sort of useless. But once you finish it, you can send it off, you can get people to read it, you can get some responses. So push through, rather than have like 10 things that are half finished, really try and focus and finish one.